Hello, fellow traders, tis I, the Rumpled One, coming to you Thursday, April the 30th, the year's 2020. Let's talk trading. It's time for the monthly wrap-up. I hope all of you traders are going to end this month with profit. Now, remember, these videos are for educational purposes only. Your results may differ from mine. Trading is extremely risky. You can lose all of your money. If you need trading, investment, or financial advice, seek the advice of an accredited financial professional. And remember, boys and girls and non-binary traders, money and risk management on each and every trade. You do not lose more on any one particular trade than you are willing to lose. And we've been talking about brain management this week, um, but today it is the time for the monthly wrap-up. And I've got Walmall on the line. How's it going, Walmall? Things are going pretty good. It's been a good trading day for me, and I hope it's been uh, profitable for everybody out there as well. How about your trading month? Did you have a good month? Did you hit goal? I haven't gone and done my statistics. I'll do that on Friday. But uh, I know overall I've well beat my, my goal for the month. And, uh, you know, I was just looking at the, at the chart just just now, and I was just looking. The month has a range so far of four or 482 pips. That's a lot of pips to cover. And you're talking the um, GU, right? Yes, sir. Okay, let me switch my chart here because I was looking because we started off the month on the EU. But t tell the um, traders what made you switch. Well, my preferred um, pair is the GU. And the reason why is because there's just more range on it. But I moved away from it because uh, in the beginning of this month, because of all the, uh, the COVID-2019 stuff, what was happening was it was flashing back and forth. And when I say flash, what I mean was in this flash of an eye, it would move five pips, six pips. And to me, that was just because of the, I'm trying to scalp here, essentially. Uh, that's just too much movement. I can't go and trade that effectively because I could literally get into a trade, be up five pips, and blink of an eye, be down five pips. You know, it's just happening so, so quickly. So I needed to go move to a pair that moved um, not, a, a little bit more deliberately. So that's why I went to the EU. Um, the range was there because, again, because of COVID-19 stuff. Uh, so we were getting enough range. So I ran the statistics, saw that it would work, and that's why I moved over there. So now that the spreads have um, dropped down on the, on the on the pound and also it's starting to move the way it used to move, I've decided to go back to what, what's more familiar to me. Right. And I, I was just moving through the charts here showing the uh, the traders out there. You, you can see here high, close, close minus low, how much the uh, pound moved. And the other thing about the pound is um, it, it went through the um, opening range for the month that first day of the month and it went through and also the first uh day of the week here um so there was definitely um some pips to be made uh just trading the uh first day of the week and first day of the month the breakout to the high side um definitely and then the inside bar it's right today and yesterday and the day before it uh escaped through the uh, top of that inside bar from four weeks ago and then um, earlier this week there was a inside well actually last week uh, six bars ago inside bar in the daily and the pound escaped through that so those horizontal line trades proved off and the range the pounds at 100 on the nose right now and we've only got five other pairs over a hundred and you can see here that we also took out the pivot on the pound and the uh, red rats just feasted. Now it's really interesting. The uh, smart rats and and the um, old older rats, um, the red rat zone is the exact same. But you can see here the um, the smarter rats have a tighter range on the green side. And here we've got showing the pivots and the pivots been taken out on the weekly on the pound let's just see um we took we just got finished taking out that uh pivot from last week so pivot traders got paid off again and you can see here in and out of that upper wick zone this hour and let's now look at the walmart trades because um there was a trader out there that was asking about um how you take profit with the Walmart. So I'll let Walmart answer that one. Well, I took the trade. 
trade uh, in this hour, in the beginning of this hour. Now, normally, if you if you look at that very first five minute candle, I normally would not take that first break. But the reason why I took that first break is because if you look at the two five minute candles prior to it, they both went and broke it. So within we're now going into uh, the next five minute candle and one candle broke it by six pips more than six pips and the other one broke it by more than five pips so i took that as an indication you know what i'm going to take this on the first break and i'm so glad i did because what i did was um, my normal method would say okay uh, once i get the five move my break even to one which i did and then at that point i went down and it came down to the 10 and i normally would just jump out at 10 um, but because of the momentum was so great, I decided, you know what, I'm moving my stop loss to five, and I followed that thing down, and on that trade, um, I, I picked up 25 pips. Um, it was a fantastic trade. Normally, like I said, I probably would have just put a TP in that 10 pips and, and let it go to that, but just because of the momentum that was there, I just went and rode it out. Well, I mean, I thought that was really was kind of the way you, you did the uh, 10 five, one. If it hits five, yeah. you move it to one. If it hits ten, you move it to five. Um, and I guess if you see a reason to exit, you do. But otherwise, you just ride that, right? Right to it. Exactly right to what you get. And normally, um, what my trading plan normally would say is that if I get to twenty, then I go and move my stop loss to ten. You okay. Know? And uh, I just put more space in here because there may be some waffling that occurs. Now I know somebody's going to ask, so I'll ask. Um, at 10, could would you consider switching to, say, a trailing stop of 5 rather than just that hard stop? I just go and do a hard stop. That's just me. Okay. Um, for me, it's, just, it's more complicated to do a, a trailing stop. I guess you can just go and do it with the, you know, with the, uh, with the, with, well, I have an EA that would do it automatically for me. But right. um, it's just, uh, I just prefer to just go and have hard stops. I know what my profit's going to be. I know what my, and it just makes it easier for me in terms of what I'm looking to see. Right, right. Now, also, something we wanted to mention, in fact, you said I should talk about it. Um, if you're looking here at this uh, five-minute chart, you can see there was a gap right here between these two red candles. Um, and normally, you know, at the beginning of the week, um, price likes to fill the gap. Well, it also fills it on the five-minute chart um, right here. You can see that that gap filled. Now, I was trading the euro, and pretty much the same thing happened here. I saw this tiny gap. And so as soon as it came down and filled it, I went long and I only scalped it for about two pips. And, the re and there was a couple reasons for that. One, my first trade, I like to get on board with a winner, even small, just for, for brain management purposes. Uh, but as you could see here, um, there, was, there was room to probably take five pips. But um, this, this isn't like a normal trade. This is just something I saw. So it's like, hey, there's opportunity to take two quick pips. Just take the money off the table, and then the, and unfortunately, um, I wasn't trading the pound at the time. Uh, but you see here later, it, it just happened a few minutes ago, um, and then that trade, as you can see, would have been worth it. Now you might say, but you're going to go long on a red candle. If you got H1 red, you'd have M5 red. It's just like, yeah, I'm going to go long because remember. Um, once you enter the trade, the reason you entered goes off the table. And once you enter the trade, the reasons you shouldn't enter the trade go off the table. And all you are now focusing on is price going your way or is it going against you. Um, and we also just, I don't know, did you take the trade at 125 on the pound just now, Walmart? No, I did not. Okay. So you can um, see here we're back in the Walmart think... zone. Yep. The other thing I'd like to point out is like 10 candles ago, you had a return bar there. We went and filled that. And right now, 11 candles back, we have another return candle. And we're about to go and fill that one as well. Okay, now we're going to have to explain what a return candle is. A return candle, um, the way I define it, is when the candle body is a certain number of pips. And in my case, I like to use 10. So if on a 1 minute, 5 minute, 15 minute... You get a candle body, in other words, the, the top of the candle minus the bottom of the candle is more than 10, 
Um, it's called a return candle. And I started that, I believe, in 2018. Anybody has the uh, donationals from 2018, there's TRO 2018 underscore return. And it'll paint an orange, um, these bars with an orange stripe um, on it. So that's just how it works and you can and you can see when you get those big big bodies just like right here i think that looks like a return candle let's see open 12 close 99 not quite the, the first candle on the hour is a return candle no and the second candle on the hour is a return candle on your charts yes sir oh, okay see they're not on mine um <laughs> So, once again, you, that's why you have to trade what you see. Um, so, we're about to come into the new hour um, in about a few seconds here. And so, it looks like we're going to go in. Uh, oh, actually, you know what? It is a return candle. My mistake. It's um, I looked at the wrong numbers. It's 12 versus 99. That's over 10. So, you can see here, it just about came right back to that open. So that's what we shoot for with the returns. Okay, top of the hour, boys and girls. And now we can see if we're going to get a Walmart trade here. See this trade here. I don't know if I take the very first break. And the reason, yes, we did have one penetration, the last five minute candle. I didn't get, and the penetration of it, there was only uh, about two pips. So that really isn't enough for me. So I'd want to go and see it, let it fall back, and then go back and then. Uh, Take the second trade in. Um, that's just me. I tend to be a little bit more conservative, um, and it just tends to work out better for me. Um, that said, that's you know you could do it either way. Uh, it's just how aggressive you want to be. Um, it's just that a lot of times when I see if I take the very first break, what happens is it'll go and return back out of that and fall back on it. And you got that brain management stuff that you got to go and deal with because you were you broke the line. You actually may have even been in some profit, and now you're sitting there with a little bit of a loss, and you got to go and deal with that. Now, if you can go and deal with that. You know that's that's great. You just uh, take take the take the trade that way. For me, you know, I try to go and take things off of my brain that I don't have to worry about, and so that's why I try to make things as simple as possible, and uh, and filter things to make things simple. My, my filters are based on the idea of making things easier for me, um, both from a psychological point of view and also from a trading point of view. If it's not simple, then it may be difficult to actually execute. Yeah. Now back to that trader that was asking about profit. You know, you mentioned sometimes you'll take two pips. What causes you to take the two rather than wait on the five? If I see that, it went, usually when I take the two pips, it's because there are a couple of reasons. One, to make goal, all I need is two pips. I'll take that. Just clear the tables, get it done, and walk away, go home. <laughs> the other reason is, let's say I went up to 4.5 pips, okay, almost hit the five, but didn't quite make it, and it turns on me. Well, I'm going to go and take my two pips off the table. Just, just grab the two pips and go because, you know, if it's turning against me, price is going down, uh, I got to trade what I see. And what I see is that it's just not going in my direction. Uh, you know, um, if it goes, and the thing is, I may get a new entry, and that'd be great too. But take take the, take the profit when you can. Um, and that's the only reason why. Right. Now, on this uh, Walmart trade, um, it actually came down and hit 25, and then it bounced up. Now it's so three. So, as you can see here, you know, He's not, he did, would not take that first trade, so. Yeah, just, it, it just, it just look what it does. It just does that so often, you know, and you, you, you just have to be very, very careful of that. And it just, for me anyway, it's just an easy way to go and keep yourself clear of some things. And it may turn out that, you know, this turns around and goes south again and, you know, it'd be worth 10 pips. I don't know what it's going to do, but I just know that right now that if, if I was in that trade, I'd be, you know, I'd be down five pips and being down five pips is not a not a good feeling sometimes. So I just try to eliminate that from having to deal with it. Yeah, because that's something that's going to come up. Uh, we're going to talk about um, a part of the brain management. Um, what happens is, is as you trade heavier, meaning more lots, um, if your brain management 
starts to change, if your emotions start to change, then you're probably not ready 